world. Hello. How is it going? It's all right. It's it's um it's my birthday today. So I've just oh. woken up. It's what is it? 8 a.m. here in Vancouver. So yeah, last night my girlfriend we had uh I had some drinks. She doesn't drink. And then uh yeah, we just uh unfortunately it's raining here. We were going to go we we're going to go and play golf and have fun, but um yeah, well I think we're just going to stay in and watch films, do some Netflix, catch Whoa. up. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. It's been stolen by King Charles. The coronation in the UK is today. So everyone's talking about that. No one's talking about my birthday. He stole it from me, which is <laughs> absolutely outrageous. How are okay. you today then? Yep, I'm good. I'm good. Just came back. Uh, I'm from East, East Java. Mm. For my job, just came back. Wow. Yeah. We so what time is it? Week. It's 10 p.m. here. Okay, 10 p.m. So nearly bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we can start now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hello, my name is Daniel Ong. I'm a vet and I create passive income strategies so that we can enjoy our life in a deeper meaning through, for my case, is through traveling and food. And I'm based in Jakarta, Indonesia. And we have a special guest today, Dan Ford, all the way from Vancouver, Canada. So Dan, thank you for You're joining welcome. us. You're yeah. welcome. Maybe please tell us more about yourself. What is it about your your YouTube channel? What is it about? Uh, well, I've I've been a teacher for about two decades, over two decades, a theatre arts teacher um, and a performer. And I was a theatre manager for a fringe theatre, which is, if you don't know what fringe theatre is, it tends to be kind of small, experimental or something, you know, a little bit different. Um, so I was a manager for a theatre for a bit. And then I worked at university for a long time, for about 15 years called, it was formerly known as Northbrook, but now it's called, I think it's called Brighton Met. And there I was doing cool. dissertations and, you know, teaching performance and devising and things like that. And then I came to Vancouver. I actually went to China. I went to Vietnam and China for a bit to teach English because I teach English as well. And then... Uh, How long I, was that? How long was that? For in China, this was China was funny. Vietnam was just for a year, like it was maybe even eight months. I just I, I wanted to. Sometimes in life, I think I would get too comfortable in a situation, and I felt very comfortable but not challenged at the job. So I went to Vietnam. I, I did a CELTA in a month, very intensive course. My English, my English literature skills is very good. But my English language skills, if you've never studied it properly, actually, I realized were terrible. You know, I was like, <laughs> I couldn't explain. And then you have a student at a very basic level asking you a question like, oh, why do you use that word and not that word? And I'd be like, hang on a minute. <laughs> English, is, English is terrible, you know, like the rules are terrible in English. So, yeah, I, I did this course for a month, which was very difficult. Um and then um, once I did that, I think two, three months later, my a friend of mine had gone to Ho Chi Minh City and said, look, there's jobs here, come out here. And so I went out there for a, about eight months. And then, um, and then I came back because my sister had had a baby. So I wanted to come back oh, and see the baby. And then the place that I worked then offered me a contract in England. And I, was, I really wanted to actually stay in Vietnam. I really loved it there. I was thinking of going to... Da Nang because Ho Chi Minh City is too crazy for me like <laughs> it's too crazy so I went to, to I wanted to go to Da Nang but then they gave me a contract so I thought I'll do this for a bit and then I just ended up staying there for a long time and then the same thing happened with China I just got very comfortable in the job and I thought I need to change here and so which I part of China to, which part of China Hangzhou okay so yeah just just down from Shanghai um 
I got had an interview and this was good because a lot of the places that I was interviewing for they just wanted an English teacher and I like I don't mind teaching English but I, I like to teach more drama kind of things I, I would like to teach English through doing drama exercises because there's some very good exercises and kids like there's an improvised exercise I do where I get the kids to tell the story and I'm in the story so and the kids even the kids that don't what like study they want you to do horrible terrible things so they really want to tell like oh you go and do uh, the teacher you you've got to go and do a poo poo you know and so <laughs> they're using language to bully you as a teacher but it's much more effective than doing just a sit down english lesson you know where you where they're just like oh, bored you know so they had the even the ones that you know didn't normally talk english they really wanted to do horrible things to me so i was giving them lots of language you know so <laughs> it was not very fun for me sometimes <laughs> but uh but yeah, I was doing drama and English out there. They, the interview basically said, look, you know, come and do drama and teach a bit of English as well. So I went out there and everyone was like, you've got to go to the Great Wall of China. You've got to go here. You've got to go there. And then, of course, the pandemic. So I didn't get to see hardly any of China. You know, we were in lockdown for a long time. So Yeah, that, I, it's, it's terrible. It's, the lockdown is really ridiculous. It's like... It's so strict. In, on the one yeah. hand, you know, I, I, I respect the clarity. The, these are the rules and everyone in the difference between English people and, and the Chinese people. These are the rules. Chinese people go, OK, and they follow the rules. And the cases we had in Hangzhou, there's millions of people live there. You know, very few, few cases, very few problems at the beginning. In England, everyone says, you know, the, the government says, right, you can't go out. And everyone goes, <laughs> just goes out and has parties anyway. And so there were huge problems. There were huge problems in England. You know, it was very confusing when I came back because I came back to visit and people were standing in line, you know, two meters apart for, and and they were following certain patterns and then they were in their social bubbles. But then some of the kids were seeing other kids, which was very confusing. And then people that were standing in queue for a coffee, the person delivering coffee didn't have a mask on or gloves on. So they could be just handing out COVID to people, you know, <laughs> whereas in China, you, you had you had scans, you had um, a health app straight away if there was a case suddenly everyone would have to go and get tested you know they were doing yeah, a mass yeah. testing there so so at the beginning i think china were doing it properly they'd experienced sars so they were already prepared for lockdown they were like straight away but towards the end they did not let go that's the problem and as as the as as we began to become used to it you know if you could say that um china didn't let go and then just just before i left you know this was the the situation where you had people in shanghai from hotel balconies screaming you know and then <laughs> obviously the prime minister just goes all right just do what you like and then it went crazy <laughs> <laughs> crazy it's like they are all stressed up like like three years almost three years yeah it it's like prison yeah it was like prison for them i'm sure and and difficult you know difficult um in some ways you know it's easy to go to restaurants and things like that mm -hmm. because it was very organized but then yeah there then some and you'd feel everything was quite normal and then there'll be a case suddenly and then everyone would freak out again and you're like well we've all been vaccinated now so unless you're going to visit someone who's in you know a difficult delicate position who's older you know, to protect pe older people, especially at kindergartens and things like that. A lot of grandparents look after the kids because, you know, the, the the parents are working. So you should be careful about these things. But they they were doing it too rigidly across the board, which was, I think, was a bit of a problem. But how about you? What was your experience during lockdown? You were you were, you messaged actually and said something about writing. You were you were writing for your mental health like yeah i i had i had this uh non-fiction writing i joined one of the writer and the name is joanna pan i'm not sure you heard of that she's a mm -hmm. british she's wow. staying in bath yeah 
So I joined her class, online class. Yeah. So mm. I I actually wrote like like fifty thousand words like every day, like like hundred hundred thousand uh hundred uh one thousand words like a day, like. Oh my god, yeah. that's really yeah. good. And and did you produce something that you were proud of? Like, were you were you someone that did writing before this this no. Um, workshop? No, I haven't done writing before in my whole life. It's like, mm. but yeah. And then I started to write blogs, mm. and somehow I I was in this uh community blog blogging community. Then we are supposed to like spend three minutes because less than three minutes there's a bounce rate. You know when you mm. scroll and you you click and click and click, keep on clicking and less you spend less than three minutes. It's considered bounce rate, high bounce rate, because you're not mm. you're not reading actually reading. So so it's a bounce rate thing. So I actually uh like uh I I'm I'm I don't follow the regulations, so they kind of block me for thirty days that I can see people's uh comments, but I can't comment on that community. So yeah, it's right. like it's like oh, okay, what? What what next? What's next? I I can't do anything. So okay, we are waiting for the thirty days. Yeah, I'll try vlogging instead. So mm. I'll try YouTubing, and I ended up. Yeah, I actually enjoy vlogging than blogging. Really? So, yeah, yeah. So here am I, like in YouTube. Yeah. So when did you start your YouTube journey? During lockdown, I started my right. YouTube journey during lockdown, and that time I was more into investing, property investment, and mm. somehow I I diverted myself into traveling and food because I I enjoy doing that because I like to travel and talk about food, the the food that I eat, especially in Indonesia. So actually, like. Yeah, I'm enjoying it because like property investment is kind of dry. That you can't actually buy properties every day, don't you? It's like mm. it's like seasonal kind of thing. So yeah, so I'm and my job requires me to travel. I travel a lot. So while traveling, even even in COVID, also I'm able to travel, but it's more in a restriction restricted condition. Right. But I'm vaccinated, so just put on my mask, follow mm. the protocol. I think it's okay. As mm. long as I'm within Indonesia, travel around Indonesia, it's it's fine. It's domestic traveling. Unless international traveling, it's very difficult during the COVID time. But domestic yeah. is, is fine. So for me, it's nice. And the thing is, the beauty of it, there's not much people traveling that time, so I can actually enjoy the view. Mm. I really? remember my, I remember my experience. That, um, I can't remember which um airport it was. I want to say it was a big. It's a big airport. I don't think. I mean, it might be in Beijing or something like that. And it was like you're in a zombie film. It to get to an airport where you know there's just nobody there. There was nobody there. It was the best travel experience of my life. You know, they you had distance on the planes because there was social distancing on the plane. So you could, on a long haul trip, you could, you know, just lie down and <laughs> relax. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. And, and reading all of the news about, because I'm very into, you know, obviously the climate and things like that and all of that news about, how much better the planet was because everyone wasn't driving or traveling and they were showing uh, I follow the NASA website and they were they were showing like the atmosphere and how clean and love, lovely it looked you know it was kind of yeah very interesting to see that part of it you know something positive from something very very negative um, yeah like like suddenly the whole the whole pollution thing becomes a uh, like wow it just just poof. Yeah. It's like and, it's like yeah. the earth could take a breath, you know, just to have a little <laughs> breath in between all the stuff. Just, and I think places should do that a bit more. I'm not sure if Ind I thought I think Indonesia don't they have cities where they have like a cycling zone or or a or a day? Is it Indonesia? I'm thinking of. There's some cities have adopted this thing like on a Sunday, 
no one's allowed to drive into the city. And so yes, they just yes, have a uh, Sunday is a Sunday. Yeah, that's car, that's car what, free day. That's it. Yeah, should do that. You know, the this the 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 just to give the earth a breath, just to give it a chance to breathe for a day, and then uh, back to pollution station again. Okay. And what about you? When when do you started your YouTube channel? Well. Um, this is yeah. So why did first of all why did I start? I think it was basically my girlfriend who I met in China. She mm -hmm. she's um, actually Taiwanese Korean parents, oh. and she came to China to to teach. She had actually been teaching in the UK. I met her a year before I went out for my interview, and then we met in China. And then we were deciding what should we do because we. If we're talking about pollution, Hangzhou is a beautiful city to visit. Lots of lovely trees and the wetland areas and all of that, lot, but still very polluted. And we we were just noticing our health whilst we were there. And we were like, right, you know, where where do we go next? We we definitely decided we want somewhere which felt healthier. And obviously, there's problems again in Taiwan and in Korea in big cities. Maybe not in the smaller areas, but. She was thinking of going to Canada because she grew up. She grew up there. She spent about I don't know fourteen years in Canada. So, mm -hmm. so I said, yeah, let's let's go, let's try because England was a bit crazy politically anyway. And I was <laughs> I was like, I don't want to go back there. It was crazy yeah, at that time. Yeah, it still is. Yeah. It still is. So I said, yep. So came to Vancouver and um, bit was here for a year. And as a teacher, found out it's very difficult to get a teaching job here as a foreigner. Mm. You need to get certificates and all sorts of things. They might not recognize your qualification. It's very friendly anti-immigration policy. <laughs> they say, you know, come oh, and immigrate. You know, come and immigrate to Canada. Everyone's uh -huh, welcome. Uh -huh, but then you uh -huh, get uh -huh. here, and it's like you don't have this form, this form. You can't do this. Can't. Oh, so okay. It was difficult, so I was trying to keep myself, I guess, as a creative person. Um, I'd always mm, done creative things and vid silly videos, you know, and, and stuff like that. Not really a video professional, but I just like making fun videos for my family. When I was in China, I was making them for people's birthdays and things like that. And so I just thought, well, let's just try doing something for fun to keep myself busy and creative and then um it was actually started because i was thinking i might be able to get some more private english lessons because i was teaching on a platform that doesn't pay very well so i thought mm -hmm. I'd, i'd do first of all I'd do an english video and i was watching a lot of the videos they were doing uh on the platform and they were very you know hello my name is dave um i'm an english teacher blah 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 and it was kind of very normal you know and all, all looked a bit the same so i thought i'd do something a bit silly and i made that video and i was like that's quite fun maybe i'll make some more and um in the uk my what i do for my youtube channel is i'm a creative coach so i've always mentored and tutored um people on their shows um their performances devised work and also It's a bit like life coaching, I get. I guess you know, it's not counseling, but it's organizing maybe your life. Or I think the main thing that I've always been interested in is getting people to be more confident in themselves and uh, realizing that there is a technique out there for everybody to write. So many people get told by some terrible teacher early in their life or some person. That they can't write, then you're not a writer. You're not a poet. You're not really musical, and yeah. this identity sticks with them. And as you get older, that identity becomes more and more fixed and firm, like a you know something you can't break away from. So there's, I hundred percent promise you, if you think you can't make music, if you think you can't write, that's absolute nonsense. You just haven't found a technique. You might not be somebody who can sit down like Shakespeare and just go, oh, and the words just flow out of your body. <laughs> But there'll be a technique. There'll be a maybe you'll use some chance activities. You'll find something here and something there. And you haven't created it yourself, but you can put it together. And then you can write something and you can edit it. That's still creative, you know, something like that to do. So that's what I thought with my channel. I started to 
make videos for fun. And then I thought, well, actually, I do this as a job anyway. I coach people. And I, then I thought I'll try and gear it a bit more towards that. Am I an Ali Abdul productivity guru? No, I'm not very productive. <laughs> I'm not a very productive person, so I can't lie. I like to learn about these things. I can be a low-level, look at me, an idiot trying to do these things. And maybe I can speak from a point of view of, you know, this doesn't work. You, you, a lot of the things that we had during the academy, I would say, amazing information. But to do some of these things, you already need to be a highly motivated person. And so you get yeah. these productivity people telling you, just do this, just do that. And 99% and of us are like, I'm too lazy. You know, is there an easier way to do it? So I guess, <laughs> so I guess I'm coming from that point of view a little bit with the productivity or the self improvement stuff. But I think as I make more videos, I think I'm going to be moving in. I'm going to stick to an area where I'm comfortable, actually, which is creativity. How do you, you know, find your creative voice? How do you use creative exercises to make your life? Um, maybe if you've been in a job for 10 years and you've always wanted to play drums or you've always wanted to do something, how can you use some creative techniques to, to kind of change the, you know, the, the kind of, a lot of people get comfortable in their work and comfort is great, but it's also a very dangerous place to be a comfortable zone where you're most people will get one of their biggest experiences and will be a very uncomfortable experience. And it's because you have to attack that uncomfortable spirit with so much more energy. And then they come out of that and they go, oh, this was life changing. Whereas most of us are living in this kind of scary, like, oh, we need money for my family. I need to do this. I need to do this. And this is a comfortable place, you know. So I'm hoping to introduce some small things to maybe challenge the status quo, that kind of, you know, is this what, is this what you want kind of thing. So, yeah, that's it. So my videos, you might have seen some of them. Yeah. The, f- the feedback I've had so far, my favorite feedback, my mum said after one of the videos, she said, what on earth are you doing? <laughs> she, there was one, I think I was doing a, a 24 parody, a parody of 24, the TV show. And she said, what are you doing? What is going on? Um, that was my favorite. I'm going to put that on, you know, on, a, on the wall somewhere. And then other people, a lot of them, you know, your intros are too long. Like people are like, I don't know what's going on in your video. Your <laughs> intro is too long. <laughs> so all of these I'm going to write down because I love, I love that kind of feedback, you know, because they're right. I mean, but am I going to change? I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm just happy, you know, doing my style. And if people like it, people like it. If not, I think I'm using it as a vessel just to get some more clients. That's my, my goal, I think, to, to, if people like the way that I'm doing things and they can see that I think the main thing with my videos that I'm not I'm not a great editor you know I'm still learning about that I'm not really a that good a performer but you can see how comfortable I am being silly and I think that is a skill that we have as kids this this art of play that if we could keep that when we're adults we wouldn't care so much about our identity, how we look and things like that. So I'm hoping people will come to the channel and go, that guy doesn't care what he looks like on camera. I want to be like that. You know, I want to be comfortable being silly and expressing myself without worrying. Maybe you should pivot, change a bit, like, like according to what, what the audience wants. I'll, I think if I, if I, if it becomes a, yeah, I think accessibility is, is absolutely necessary and professionalism. There's got to be a professional element to it yeah. because otherwise people, you know, you wouldn't go to a counsellor or a psychologist who's, you know, got pencils up their nose, you know. It's like, so there has got to be an element of that. But at this point, I think with creativity, the most important thing is, is don't take yourself too seriously at the beginning. When, whenever I was devising, devising work, the best thing you could do people students used to in in a project we would do we they would we'd say right you can make any show you like and this was amazing i could do anything but then they'd spend the first two weeks sitting down and having these very intense conversations very serious and they haven't made anything yet 
but they're like only thinking, and and it and it's and it's too yeah. too much at the beginning. A creative experience is better, I think personally. It's my opinion, obviously, but when you when you just throw the net out, you you get as much research as possible, and you gather and you gather and you play with it like a child plays with blocks. Let's learn about all the ways that we can we can use this material before we decide what we're going to do with it. So I think I'm in that stage and I think I'll be in that stage for about 30, 40, 50 videos. And then if I hit on something which works for me, because, you know, when you're making videos, I think you'll probably agree there's no point in doing it if it's going to be horrible to do for yourself. You've got to try and make it work for you. So I'll, yeah. I'll hit on something that works for me. And as you say, maybe pivot the accessibility a little bit the intro rather than doing some weird <laughs> King Arthur sword in a stone with strange music and a weird voice that you can't understand. I'll, I'll maybe make it a little bit geared towards some of the things that people are thinking and worrying about so that I can gather. Cause otherwise I'm never going to get an audience that um, is receptive to, to me, you know, that or my, my resonate, resonate with your idea. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. How about you? Have you got like a mission statement for your for your channel? Is there something where you'd like to see your audience kind of transform in any way? So it's like my video is basically on traveling and food. So it's mm. kind of a lifestyle. So by traveling and enjoying food, it doesn't have to be luxurious. It doesn't have to be expensive. Something that you can really enjoy life by having passive income it's like right. i'm i'm like moving back backwards like like okay this is lifestyle like traveling food and how, how do you achieve that mm. by passive income how do you do passive income yeah we have a lot of strategies so i'm, I'm like like working myself backwards nice yeah. and what have you learned so far because you, you've made a lot of videos right yeah, I did a lot of videos, especially on shots, because shots, it doesn't take a lot of time. So mm. it's just like 15 seconds. I think it's it's fine because shots, the strategy is it counts as views, not the amount of watch time. Mm. Whereas long form, yes, watch time is more important. Yeah. So shots is like, it doesn't matter whether it's 60 seconds, 50, 15 seconds or five seconds, 10 seconds, as long as there's views, yeah, it's considered view. Mm. So I don't really like put a lot of effort and time in shots, but as long as I post something in shots, it's sometimes you, you can really can get crazy views. Like you can get 1,000, 2,000 or I can have, I have one like 23,000 views. It's like, wow, that's, yeah. That's crazy, you, isn't you, it? You, you can't you can't predict it's like so it's like a try and error mm. and timing also is i kind is i think it's kind of important as well like what time you actually post them really them. yeah and as more videos that you post you gather more data and information like where are they from? Which country? Like the range? What what age they are they are they are in? Females, males? Which country? Mm. Yeah, percentage of the age range of the age. So you 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 the more data you do, the the more videos that you put in, the more data that you you gather, and you'll give a a clearer picture like which direction that you go that you're you you the investor in you is coming out here the investor rather than the travel 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 lifestyle guy so how much time do you have you spent with data then like have you really have you got like a target audience do you think okay my main my main audience are from indonesia it's about like 50% but mm. it seems that now audience from the US is coming up. They're wow. slowly building up like like five percent. Now it's about thirty percent. Wow, that's 30, cool. Yeah, thirty percent. Yeah. 
And how did you, did you, did you do that intentionally or is this just an accident? Like, why do you think there's more of a US audience I, following you? I, I don't know, but <laughs> it seems that it's, it's like, it's getting more and more Americans uh, audience. So oh. actually my video is like a mixture between English and Indonesian language. And I mm. tried to do full Indonesian language, but I feel more comfortable using English. So now my, my strategy is more, I think now is I want to use English rather than Indonesian, but, but I can actually do subtitles as well. You can mm. actually tra translate, auto-translate into many languages. Mm. Yeah, I think English, based on something crazy, there's some crazy statistics, like 80% of things on the internet are English, something like that. You know, it, it's a very accessible language, I guess, for everybody around yeah. the world. So it's a good way to probably reach a wide audience. Yeah, and it's, it's common and, mm. yeah, so I'll stick to English. Yeah. And what about yeah. your PTYA journey? Like, I'm sure you've probably spoken about this already. I saw you had an interview with Oscar about this, but um, how did you find the course? What did you take from the course? What things would you have liked that maybe the course didn't offer you? It gives me a more laser focused direction. Like previously, mm. okay, I just do videos. Like it's more of a quantity. By attending this PTYA, it's more to quality. Like what, what are the things that you need to focus on? Mm. And I've learned like the thumbnails is so important. The thumbnails is like a hook, hook the audience. What, what makes the audience want to click? to your through your video mm. that's the most important thing like how how well that your video is how good is your video need? good is nobody knows if no one wants to click to your thumbnail yeah yeah, yeah. And that's just, that's scary isn't it especially the last one yeah. we had with film booth that was yes. quite brutal <laughs> you know he was basically yeah. saying yeah you need to make that work it's quite difficult, though, to stand out with a thumbnail, don't you think? Because everyone seems to be doing the same kinds of things now. Yeah, yeah. And I see that uh, once you do it, you can see a lot of people doing that, that kind of style. like Half, so, half face. Yeah, yeah, like, like <laughs> negative, positive, like. Yeah, yeah. So things can change. And one thing is... Ali taught us to use the chat GPT. That is amazing, really amazing. Like, wow. Create titles, it, 10, 10 best titles, create your description. Wow, like amazing, amazing, truly amazing. I tell you what, it is amazing. I, I think the only thing with chat GPT, unless you give it, <clears throat> unless you're taught to give it the right, the right direction, it does produce very formulaic, kind of boring ideas, creative ideas, especially if you like storytelling. That's I think when we did the what I what I took from the academy was a, an amazing network. I think that's the the strongest thing about it. People in there were very supportive. The yeah, the people helping you were lovely they were all lovely i mean i had one experience i think in a accountability group and i i feel like all right let, let's talk about the positives right so that was cool i loved the variety of speakers because at first it was feeling like things that i didn't like about youtube i don't like people making a sale over a video over 15 minutes i'm going to tell you in just this in, in a minute why you need to watch this video? Oh, and, and then halfway through the video. Yeah, we're going to get to the thing. I'll switch off from that. I'll switch off from sales pitch, you know, because it's, it feels unnatural to me. And, yeah. and some of the tips and tricks they were teaching us were sales tricks, which I was like, well, I don't like those videos. 
So there was a part of me going, do I have to do this? I was starting to question, like, do I have to do this thing as well in, in order to make it work? And I started to try things out and my views were going down. And I was like, hang on a minute. Then we had the storytelling workshop, which was amazing mm. and totally more resonated with, with me. And then Elizabeth, Elizabeth, was it oh, Phillips? She, yeah. Elizabeth she is yeah. cool, you know, just yeah. very down to earth. I love um, her. Wow. She's great. She, yeah. she was just telling you things, you know, she wasn't, because he was pushing about getting an editor all the time. And I can't afford to do that. I can't afford to do that at the moment, you know, get an, uh, someone to edit my work and do this kind of thing. So she was doing it herself. The one thing I would say about all the people that were given the lectures, you would feel at some point, oh, this person's down to earth and normal. And then they would say something unusual that you think that's why you're successful. You know, you, I was listening to Philip Elizabeth going, well, she can do that. I can do that. Like, she can do that. It's easy. Well, I'm talking, I can do it. And then she turned around and said, oh, for my thumbnails, you know, I spit, I take 400 photos. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, what the? And she spends all that. And I was like, that is why you're there. You know, at, all, at some point, they're all obsessed about something. Ali is obsessed about, you know, he, his unfair advantage he called it didn't he you know his speaking yeah, yeah. his speaking skills are amazing very just he can he's yeah, very rarely yeah. making mistakes he can just punch out very nice language very easily elizabeth her videos are you know well researched but then as she said spending all that time on the design and the look of it and and mm -hmm. you could watch a video and you you could be enjoying it and you might not know why but it might be to do with the actual design of the video the tone the kind of color tone of it and the organization of her of her angles and things like that it's very nice um even the storytelling guy i mean super cool but he knows a lot about storytelling like he he knows a lot of details film booth was the same so that was intimidating you know you'd have these workshops where you'd feel very you know, oh, right, I could just do a thumbnail, my video would be good. And then they would say something, you go. And so it was very, it was like a roller coaster for me. It was like, oh, I can do it. Oh my God, these people are insane. I could never do that. <laughs> oh, maybe I can, maybe I can't. So they, there was lots of those things. Circle, I think, was amazing. Um, the, the workshops were cool. Um, lovely to, I feel like they were honest people. So again, you could do a training or something and feel, that you've just been sold a product and, you know, you could be spoken to like some kind of American coach. Everyone can do it and just follow this plan. It wasn't like that. It was realistic. <clears throat> yeah. The, the things I, I think I, I, I would have liked more as a teacher is someone that spends a long time designing a curriculum and having clear points of feedback, you know, whilst we, we did have some, some kind of smart objectives in in the lessons i feel like there should have been more lessons and more time spent on feedback the feedback time is too too quick we could do that independently on discord but i feel like we should have had rather than a 10 minute 15 minute call it should be longer because feedback is yeah. the most important thing to go into and and i found every time we were in breakout rooms in accountability groups in feedback with the with the team it was like you're rushing and you're not getting any depth of of conversation about specific points you know that you could really go and deep dive into so for me i think i would have liked to be more structured <clears throat> yeah, week one you do this video you feedback to it here and then you adapt that video and then you re-upload that video so you go through a clear learning process where you see a clear change in what's happened. Um, and obviously we're adults, so probably there's an expectation we can do that ourselves on our own. But some people are starting out, they don't, they don't know this kind of thing. So I think, yeah, a bit yeah, more I structure. I feel more lessons, more feedback lessons would have been nice um, for me. And then what I got, the undertone of things that was, wasn't necessarily said they were really pushing the idea that everybody can do this. And yeah, they're expecting like everyone knows. Like yeah, and I feel like 
there was an undertone, a kind of unspoken realization that the world has changed since Ali Abdal started producing self-improvement videos. So there are a lot of people there doing self-improvement videos. And when he entered this market, this hemisphere, not, not lots, there wasn't lots of things made like that. And what, a guy that I like, Wheezy Waiter, very down to earth YouTuber, just do like 10,000 steps and I don't use my phone for a month. And then now everyone's doing that and it's, it's very saturated. That shouldn't stop you from doing it. I think people still connect with people. You know, if you mm -hmm. like somebody, yeah. they can do whatever they like. <laughs> they can sit and have a cup of tea. My girlfriend watches this woman that I, ca I cannot stand her. And, but <laughs> she's followed her story from the beginning. So she, she's got a whole backstory like, uh, of things that I don't even know about. I just watch this woman who's, you know, she's very successful and she's whinging about they don't have oat milk. I'm like, I don't care if you don't have oat milk. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's, it, you, you will connect some. So there is hope there, but also I feel like the production values since Ali started to now have gone whew, through the roof. And, and I'm doing a video at the moment about our attention span in that Microsoft report they wrote in 2000 or something or 2000, I think the study, there was a study done about attention span of human, human beings being 12 seconds. And then by 2013, it changed to eight seconds, a second lower than a goldfish. And now we're yeah, 10 yeah. years further on. Like, and I know the experience I'm going on my phone. And if I hit a video, I will spend a few seconds. If the audio is bad or something else is bad, my, I, I'm skipping. And and I and rather than and that rather than expecting everybody to to make better videos, actually, <clears throat> I think people need to 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 find patience again because you're getting this in the news as well, sensationalist headlines. You're getting it in interviews, interviewers attacking people for a soundbite you're just trying to have an in-depth conversation about culture or the environment and and the questions are simplified and it's too stupid you know in a conversation that you it's right we've got two minutes you know it, it's our patience levels are terrible and you know people need to what i've taken from this academy is actually taking the time to feedback to people's videos I, I might, the audio might not have been good. The beginning of the video might not have been good. They might be wearing, you know, pajamas. They've got some eye gunk, you know, in their <laughs> eye and they're talking. Normally that would be a switch off for me, but I, I sat and I listened to these, to some people. And then halfway through the video, they said something that was amazing. I was like, oh, I didn't know that. You know, and, and I feel like people need to be trained back into spending time listening to an opinion spending time you know and it's not easy to do because we've got busy lives and we don't we might not have that time so i understand why people don't do it i can't blame people but it's difficult to see that the the place that we're on is gearing itself you know this microsoft report what they took from all this research was like right we need to get people's attention we need to do it by getting them, and they've said this in a polite way, but essentially, as we talked about with thumbnails, you know, hook them in. And often, if you watch football and you follow football soccer, you know, they do that in a very annoying way, which I just don't like. They'll say, Messi is going to kill his whole squad. You know, and you look at the user, you say, he's going to kill them? You read it, and it's like, oh, he's, he's going to have a cup of tea. You know, it's, it's not anything like the inside of the story. So whilst we're pushing for this hook, at the same time, I will have an adverse reaction. If someone hooks me into something and tricks me, and I get, get partway through the video, and they've shown me loads of stuff, and it's like, it's not, it doesn't meet my expectation level, then I'm probably not going to follow them again, you know? that will put me off even more so if you're gonna if anyone's watching this and they're thinking about these things and think it's try and manage the expectation level of your audience don't make your hook ridiculous you know the the title ridiculous you might get them to watch your video but you could turn people away i think as well 
So yeah, that's my that's my feeling about the course. But I loved it. I loved meeting people. That's that's the thing. Meeting everybody, you, you know, yourself, um, Oscar, who you spoke to. I had a big conversation yeah. with Oscar, yeah. and um, yeah, I think now the the most important thing for everybody, all of us, is that in the next few weeks, people are going to struggle because we haven't got the course. So hopefully, people can support each other via circle and and other ways to make sure that we keep this momentum going because it's very we had people on the cohort that had been at cohort one or two or three or four and they maybe come through three or four iterations of the cohort and they give up they give up each time the cohort comes there's all this energy dopamine right i'll produce and then two months later everyone stops doing it because they self-esteem or they're not getting the views so i think that's the thing afterwards is it's to support each other you know keep supporting each other yeah so it's good to have small groups like you know one to one like you know like mm. we arrange our own like weekly i think it's good because like 500 of us like it's impossible to know everyone yeah one to one so it's like you pick a few like yeah yeah i loved the chat and i would imagine when when there was a workshop i loved the chat like the variety of things yeah. it was like having people having a nervous it was like somebody with schizophrenia having a nervous breakdown you know that the, the, you'd be in a lesson so ali would be saying something important and everyone would be like he's got a nice tree oh well, look at his computer oh is he wearing something up i'm so excited and it'd be like blah, 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 blah. and and uh and i found i'd imagine if you were a bit older and you weren't good at technology you know there was a lot of things to take from the chat you know links yeah. people are sending no, 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 no. and it was I, too I love, quick i love to to have that you know the live the live session because recorded mm. session is like kind of boring to me so i don't really yeah. like to watch recorded class yeah no it's yeah. fantastic fantastic people could um you know, ask him, ask questions. I mean, he's not a celebrity. Like, he's he's re- re- pretty down to earth. But it was nice, those feedback sessions, you know, ask direct yeah. questions. He was very patient as well. I thought they, they were very patient because there would be the same questions coming back, you know, a few times, which he was, and he would, they were very patient about being supportive. Um, yeah, really good course. I really, yeah, valued, valued it. I think that's good value, really good value. Yeah, agree, agree with you. Because like, I paid like thousand six dollar USD. Like, wow, mm. it's it's kind of pricey compared to the rest of the courses out there. Mm. So it must be something special on this PTYA, and it's like mm. so many people is joining. Like, I can see the reviews are good. So it's like okay, I'll try this because I I want to be like really serious to. To scale up my journey in YouTube, so yeah, it's it's actually a it's a worth investment. Yeah, you sound much more serious about the YouTube journey than I do. <laughs> so, what things? What what do you think you've other than thumbnails? How have you managed to produce so many videos? Are there any points where you struggled? to where you were like I'm, you know one video you said you know you got thousands thousands of views and then maybe the next week you know it's like 25 or 100 or something what how do you deal with that yeah i have yeah i told you that 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 video i got 23000 views and mm. i have really bad views like like 16 10 views like <laughs> right. yeah i don't care like like I'll do it next. Uh, I'll do it better next. Like, yeah, next. So, so I don't really like put into my heart like, oh, I feel so sad. Like, like no point being sad. Like, okay, you can be sad for one hour, two hours. Like, you have to move on, move on. Mm. Yeah, stop being sad for too long. How would you teach that if you could write a design a course about the art of not caring and not taking it? Would would there be any things that you would do with students? to get them to because that is a huge skill to have is they not care like not worry i think the most important thing is what is your purpose passion is another thing it's like wow you have passion in doing this passion in doing that but 
yeah what's your purpose what's your purpose what's your what's your goal what's your final destination mm. where do you want to go from point a to point b where mm. do you want to what what do you want this youtube channel to take you to to which level that you want i think that's that's very important not not just like oh i want to have a youtube channel oh i just want to have i will just want to make videos oh, i just want to have friends to watch my video like it, it, it doesn't serve the purpose like, like for what for fun like mm. <laughs> because it's for fun like uh, you're wasting your time like yeah for me for me i want actually as i as we discussed early on that i'm writing writing so actually i want to publish a book so oh. yeah yeah and i wanted to use this platform youtube to build up my audience and yeah hopefully i can i can have a, a platform a market that oh hi guys this is this is what i'm producing this is my book yeah because mm. without without a platform you have a very nice book okay this is my book like who are you like like who wants to read your yeah. book yeah <laughs> yeah something like that yeah <laughs> I think I think one thing that was missing from the course, which is a huge thing when you're teaching theatre, we looked at audience. We looked at the the demographic, like the dynamic of your audience, imagining certain avatars, but we didn't necessarily think about audience engagement in the modern day. We were assuming our audience are just going to passively receive your your content and a lot of theater now has become much more interactive and immersive almost taking a page from the book from gaming gaming is hugely amazing at storytelling and interactivity mm. and so you've got theater companies now that you go to watch their show but it's happening all around you i've seen some amazing shows where you're walking around and actors something happens here and then you've got to run to go and follow something else or maybe you are part of it in some way and i feel like with one thing they could have maybe gone into in the course is how do you get your audience to engage with you and and even maybe shape your content a bit more they kind of mentioned you could throw out a poll you could ask your as an audience survey but I would imagine there are some other ways to do this. Now, what you're doing is fantastic. You're, you're engaging with your audience through interview. The fact that I'm here, my audience, not many of them, <laughs> I've only got 68 <laughs> subscribers, but some of those subscribers might, might come and watch this. So we've, we're, we're putting together two audiences here. Yeah. And I would suggest that people think about some things. So during lockdown, what my friend did, which was very nice, was because everyone was in lockdown, she, she, we did a dance piece. So the, what the first person would have to do a dance move and they would finish their dance move and hold it. The next person would take the end of that dance move and do something else and finish it. The next person would take that. So you had people all around the world contributing to this one thing, which meant the audience numbers, if you're looking at your data statistics, was huge because you're getting... I think there were 20 artists who, who did some kind of performance. So you've got 20 artists, audiences contributing to something that was collaborative. And I feel like collaboration, especially for your small YouTubers like myself, you're a bit more, you're a bit bigger, definitely a bit bigger than me. But even <laughs> that, you know, if, if you're collaborating on something, maybe you're creating you know an interview is one way of doing it but there might be some other creative ways where you deliver something to do with food for example and then i deliver something to do with that country in terms of theater say we're in um say we go to paris you can do a section about the food of paris the travel the you know how do you do it on a budget i go there and say right if you want to go and watch some theater here are three price points you can look at Moulin Rouge, way expensive, or you could go on the street or do that. And that kind of, those kinds of collaborations, as I say, I think develop and support, you know, it supports each other and, and develops bigger audiences for small YouTubers. Yeah, it's like working hand in hand, like, like synergistic effect. Definitely, definitely. Especially for us little little people, you know, I think, I think it's a, 
it's a good way around the problem of you know creating content and also when you're creating content if you're busy you've got a family you might only have to do two minutes of that that video i just produced two minutes of that video the difficulty i guess it's not a difficulty but everyone can share that video to their channel you don't have to create a separate channel everyone can share that little thing to their channel so you could create a 20 minute 30 minute video with with 10 people and you've only done say two minutes of it sorry my maths is bad but you know what I mean? <laughs> two and a half minutes or something and and you've done you've got 30 minute video on your channel that's getting watch time and and views so yeah something yeah. for people that are starting out to think about those kinds of collaborations what and also how can you get your audience involved so can you interview an audience? Can you get your audience to submit something? Could you, the, your audience submit a, um, a review of Paris if we're sticking with the Paris analogy? You know, what is your review of, so you get some sound bites from people and then people love being in things. They go, oh, mom, you know, I'm in a YouTube video that Daniel's done and in Indonesia and, you know, I, and they have like a 10 second thing that they say and it's like, oh, look, I'm famous, you know, so... People love that. People love to, I think music artists were doing this a long time ago. They were showing the process of creation. So they were showing, you know, making an album. And rather than just producing the album, then releasing it, they were talking through like, do you like this track? We've got two guitar riffs for this, you know, and getting their audience to go, which ones you prefer? The audience was, oh, we prefer this one. And, and being part of that process is is really nice for for audience members. They feel like part of your family in a kind of way. So, something that, yeah to suggest to people, I think, would be cool. So actually, our live actually we have a chat group. Can you know our our audience can actually? Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Say something like in the chat. Is there anybody there then? Uh, the people um, awake. So far, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway anyway it's a good start it's like you know we were like talking almost an hour it's like we have produced an hour video just by talking yeah, exactly. like chatting so it's like yeah really good yeah yeah so maybe after an hour maybe um like what what i what are your take away like like what do you want to give your audience any message to your audience that's a big one okay um i guess what it depends what yeah what what they're tuning in for because they're probably your audience so i don't know you probably can give your audience a better takeaway if if you're watching this because you're interested in ali abdal's course it's finished I hope he does another one, but it's finished. So I would speak to Daniel about this. Daniel got a, didn't you get an award for love, helpful, help, helping people, the heart award or something? Yeah. Some... Did you get, yeah. Speak to Daniel about things. Maybe Daniel can, can relay some information in his way about some of the key things of the course. Cause uh, you were very, active in the group and you, i think you engage really well with all the material and people and very supportive i think you'd be a great person to talk to about you know how to do youtube or or that so if you're watching because of that speak to daniel um and then if you're coming to my channel look the intros are too long and weird okay that's not my professional my i'm not like that as a professional person hopefully you've listened to me talk I'm a teacher, you know, I, I, I do teach her things, hopefully in a, in a nice, relaxed way. So if you're coming, if you're interested in my channel, if you're interested in doing creative things, you can do it. If someone's told you in your life you can't do it, it's nonsense. People are not born, you know, there's some special people that maybe are born and some, something happens in their life where their environment is great or challenging, which makes them good at something. But everybody can be good at something. I never thought I could write poetry and I was in China, right? And there was a poetry competition and I thought I'm terrible at poem. And I'd write a poem and I'd look at it the next day and I'd be like, this is the worst thing I've ever read in my life. And I was in, and I remember being in a taxi and I got this thing on WeChat, bing, came up at a poetry group and it said, if you write a poem every day 
for the next 30 days, you will be published. And there was no other rules. They didn't say, are we going to pick good ones? They just said they'll pick anyone. So for a laugh, the taxi driver that was driving me to work farted. And it was the, <laughs> it was an egg. He'd had egg for breakfast, maybe some noodles, egg, something. It was, it was bad. And I was like, do you know what? I'm going to write a poem about this. So I wrote this really stupid poem. Da -da -da -da. He farted, blah, blah, blah. And I posted it on the group. And then I thought, hang on a minute this fart poem could be published. And suddenly I thought, right, I'm going to write a poem. And I tell you what, the act of doing every day is more important than what you're doing at first. If you can spend every day five minutes writing something, just quickly, don't worry, don't edit it, don't worry about it, don't destroy it, never destroy it, just keep it there for yourself. Over time, something will happen. You will start to notice things that you like. You can take pit, bit, bits and parts of each thing and it will develop. So, yeah, if you come to my channel, you will, if you think you can't do something, you know, book a, book a session with me and I'll get you doing something. I'll motivate you to do something. So, yeah, in the end, the story was I got published. And, and for an extra joke in China, like, so I was in this poetry book and I wrote some silly things, but I wrote some serious things in the end as well. I really enjoyed doing it. It was really difficult to, to do, but I was like, I'm not going to care. Just post it. And, and for a laugh for my mum's for Christmas, instead of writing my name, I wrote her name and her biography. So my mum is now the author of a poem about farts in a, poetry book in China and I think that's one of the greatest moments of my life <laughs> when she saw the book she was so horrified <laughs> that her name was used with this thing so yeah that's that's the takeaway be playful um yeah and uh come and visit the channel and um keep if you're watching Daniel's channel he needs more views he's a very nice guy keep watching his content that would be my takeaways how about you Okay, thanks, Dan. Uh, if you want to know more about Dan's, you can check his link down there in the description box. So hopefully, yeah, subscribe to his channel if you enjoy his videos. So I think like we have been talking for an hour now. So thank you for your time, Dan. And happy birthday to you once again. Yeah. Yeah. Hope you have a great day with your loved ones. Thanks, man. And yeah, you take care as well. Great to meet you. And I'm sure we'll chat again at some point. Yeah, we keep See. in touch. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Thank you. Cool. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.